Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. <coughs> Quite simply, the greatest fishing show on YouTube. And you predator anglers out there are going to be so impressed with this little clip we've got for you now because I've got an exclusive interview with a pike fishing mad 21 year old Nathan Brotherton who I met recently at a lake. Helped us catch a big pike. Mike got a 16.6. Man, does he use big lures or what? Check this one out. I'm sure you'll be interested. I'll tell you what, I certainly learned some tips out there as well about using big lures. Come on, let's go and watch it. Well, here we are on a beautiful setting on a lovely wooden veranda. The lake's behind us. I've got a table full of pike lures here. And Nathan Brotherton from Stoke, 21 year old Nathan, is pike mad. And he's got some big lures. I only fish with relatively small lures, and I'd have to say I'll almost be, be probably class me as a dead bait man. I like moving dead baits, you know, small ones, four, five, six inches. Nathan uses animal lures. I haven't got anything like this, not freshwater fishing anyway. Nathan, that one there, well, I don't even know what it is. It's just an incredibly big lure as far as I'm concerned, but I know you catch bike on it because you've already told me. Tell me a little bit about them. So, well, this lure here, this is a big soft plastic with a paddle tail to it. And as you can, as you can see, it looks very much like uh, a realistic fish. And as you're bringing it through the water, it would just paddle like that, and the pike love them. And especially this lure as well. This lure here, I've caught three pike over twenty pound plus on it. It's. Uh, now, is that weighted? That one, Nathan. It's got yes, a weight this in one it. is weighted. So this one would dive to quite deep. I mean, that you can fish up to about sort of twenty foot of water, and you want to be working your deep waters of that. Anything the sort of shallow water, six to eight, you want to be using different lures like these. You can work these in slightly shallower water to say up to I don't know, sort of six to eight foot. And uh, you've got them in the red colour there. And you've got the big ones with the uh, the rainbow trout pattern. As you can see from that one, that's caught a few pike. Well, let's just show that camera close up. Look at this. I thought you could see those guys. That's been slash cuts right the way through there. Now, how long do these last? The, these, what do you call them, like latex rub, are they? Yeah, well, of? these, as in, obviously, they do get a bit of wear and tear off the pike, especially when you catch a few on them. But, I mean, some people will chuck them away after they've been, uh, been used quite a bit. But, yes. personally, with me, I get a, a little welding torch. Oh, yeah. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll literally melt the plastic and yeah. then put it in water and then that will let you seal it back up again. So it's not it's not scrappable, you can so definitely it's not get... scrappable, no. And I'll tell you what, the more burn marks and the more bite marks <laughs> you get, I reckon the more fish to take as well. And, and I've even had the, before, yeah, go on. the uh, the tails come completely off and I'll buy a cheap rubber tail, say something like that, from the sea fishing lures and I'll weld that on and make my own sort of lures. So you, you salvage everything? I salvage everything. I mean, um, they cost a bit of money and uh, I like to get my money's worth out of them. What do they run, a lure like that? A big, a big what do you call it, a shad, really? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a well, rainbow yeah, it's trout, just, but... uh, I mean, with that, as in, if I sort of let them down, I can even fish them into 50 foot of water, trolling. Yeah. Um, but generally, sort of 10 to 20 foot, you can work them quite easily. Do you find that's a standard, a single at the top and a treble at the bottom with, yeah. the, with these rubber lures? I mean, with these, if you wanted to, you could sort of bottom bounce them. If you if you were uh, worried about snags, you could take that treble off. Um, but sometimes you will get pike grabbing the back of them and uh, they won't get hooked up. And I always think that treble there is always going to hit it at some point. Gotcha. Now I go sea fishing, Nathan, and this thing, oh, treble and a single. Look at the tail on it. I mean, it's a foot long. What is that one all about? Well, I mean, with these ones there, you've got these sort of classic paddle tails which sort of wobble around in the water like that. But then you've also got your lures with your curly tails as well. I mean, this one's a particularly good lure, as, in you, can, as you can see, it looks very much like an eel. And uh, pike do love an eel as a meal, and it's got a really good action in the water. Then you've also got other sort of curly tail baits like this dog here. Do they get do they get hit at the back a lot though by you, jack pike? I mean, this, is, this one's a strong rubber, so yeah. I imagine they don't cut it. But you, have you lost tails? Or have you yeah, lost well, fish, I imagine? Well, well sometimes, as in you will sometimes when you wind, then you'll get a bang and pulling at the tail, and especially of this one here, and um, very often it is a jack. I mean, generally a pike will come in and hit it in the middle. Yeah. Uh, if it's a big pike, they will usually engulf them. Um, but that problem some, can sometimes happen, and to be honest, if it is happening, I'll either sort of try and rig a hook further back. Yeah, like a stinger, we call them a stinger hook. A yeah. stinger, or uh, I'll perhaps use something like this where if a fish is particularly feeding, there's more chance if he does hit that, yeah. he's going to hit a treble into him. Now, how do you just show him how you put that loose treble? Because that's loose on a spare bit of wire there. Yeah, well, this basically, it's on a it's stinger. It's rigged off the top. So did so you rig this one? No, this this came like this. So it's yeah. rigged on the jig head there. Yeah. 
And That's a little a, lead weight or something there, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, there's a little weight well there just to get it down. It's only about six grams, so that will fish quite shallow up in the water. Is there any lead inside here? There's not. There's, there's nothing, no lead there's in nothing. there so at all, no. This would class as a slow sink lure. This is a very slow sink, yeah, gotcha. and you can work it very close over the wee beds. Yeah. Um, if you see with this, you've got a little wire loop there, Yeah. and this is your stinger set up. So if you just push that over that eye there, once you clip your trace on or tie that on, oh, it that holds it. Come off. Yeah, it holds it. And then you can just literally just rig that just into there. And to be honest, another good thing this does as well is when you get a pike hit on that treble, it will pull out of the bait during the fight. So your lure is dangling outside of the pike's mouth, yeah. as opposed to in his mouth where it would get tied up in shreds. So it can yeah, actually yeah. save some lure damage as well. And I assume you can make these. Do you have to buy these made up stingers, or can you buy extension? You make an extension yourself. You can buy. I mean, this one was just one which came with the lure light, but I mean, they're very easy to make yourself. I mean, all you need is just crimpy tool, a bit of wire and a crimp and some trebles really. What sort of wires there do you think what, what would that uh, be roughly? That's probably about sort of 50 to 60 pounds. Oh, so. strong stuff. Yeah, 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 strong stuff. Okay, that's good. This one looks, although this is an enormous one, it's got a weight in it. Well, you're going to catch something on that because it looks all over it. Would you fish it shallow water, deep water or what? Because I see it's flat, it's flat there. Well, this one here, it, this one's mainly sort of for the deepest water. But you can buy these in a, in a shallow model as well, which has got less weight to them. Um, and you can work them over the weed beds quite well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just because it is a heavy lure doesn't always mean it's going to fit, you know, fish deep because uh, a lot of the weight can actually be in the plastic. Yes, yeah. Moulds. But yeah, with that one, it's um, yeah, it's got some hooks on it. If something's biting that, he's, uh, he's You're going to get it. Hooked, You're yeah. going to get it, yeah. Now you've got, I call them soft. Softies are going to call these here. That's a hard one. Do you... Yeah. Do you use these as much or the hard ones? Yeah, I do. I mean, these these are very effective as well. I mean, you've got the best of both worlds, really. You've got a plastic tail at the back, and uh, if it does get chewed up, it's very easy to replace just that bit. With the split rings here, yeah? Yeah, yeah. As in, literally, I can just thread that grub off and put a new one on. I mean, if I wanted to, I could even change the colour of that. I was just going to say the same thing. You'd change um, over as well, yeah? Yeah, I mean, as you can see from that, he's, uh, he's had a few fish. He's been whacked. Now, that, how would you work that? Because there's no vein on the front to make it dive. Well, this, anything. it's... I suppose it's sort of classed as a little bit of a jerk bait. I mean, you can fish these straight with that tail at the back, it will just come through the water and give a nice rippling action. But if you were to use a stiff rod like a jerk bait rod with little taps, you can actually get it to dart around in that sort of sense, which can really wind a pike up on its day. So you'd be working with, working that lure with the rod top with little short jerks yeah, on yeah, it? Yeah, just little taps down with a stiff rod and then that will impart some action into it. Now there, that, that one's got a join in it. You've got another one here that's got sort of triple four yeah. what, three joints in it what is what these, is that one these are more of sort of a swim bait this and uh this layer and color has been particularly effective for me uh, i mean you can buy them without the lips but i prefer a little bit of a lip as i just think it just gives it a bit more of a wobble on it but this is this is a very slow sink so you can count it down yes. and you can fish them a little bit deeper but generally it was sort of fish to about i don't know sort of six foot in depth so you, just so if there's youngsters out there who realise what a countdown lure is, just explain that, you know, yeah. that you, with the depths and that. Well, basically, with a lot of lures, when you're sort of searching out the water, uh, I mean, you can cast them out and then you can sort of count to see how far they sink, uh, so you know roughly where the bottom is. Um, so then you, if, you, if you start, if you count, say, 20 seconds and you start catching on the bottom, then your next cast, you might let it count down to 18 seconds or so. Yeah. So then you can, you, so you can work the lure in the, in the right zone. Now this is getting down towards my size. That's getting out of the totally awesome size, even though I class that as a big, I think I've got one of those sort of shad type lures. And it's got a, a vein going down and a kink scoop to it. So, well, and, and it's a hard one, that's more of a, well, that's a standard one. Of the, one. Uh, the, the classic super shad wraps they are, and they've been catching pike for years. Um, probably not used as much now compared to some of the soft plastic lures, but they have taken a lot of big pike, and they still catch big pike now. Now, do you do you think people? I know what you're saying. Like, the, is it a marketing thing that people are using these rubbers? You know, the technology's there to mould these now. Because I've got old plugs, and I still catch on them yeah. now. You know, but do you think they actually hold on to these rubber ones a bit longer? Or I just think with the soft plastics. Behind it? They've got a lot of wobble to them. You can see them in the water. They look absolutely brilliant. You've got a good sort of re shape resemblance of a fish. When fish bite into it, they sort of chew and hang on a little bit longer because it feels like a real fish to them. As in, sometimes with, say, a hard lure, yep. you can have a fish strike at your lure, and once he, once he hits that, he knows there's something up with it. And, yep. you know, if you lose that fish, then there's a chance he, he probably won't come back again for another hit. While the soft plastic, 
if he hits it and he doesn't feel them hooks, he can still sometimes be keen and uh, sometimes you'll end up catching it. You've had him take more than once. You know, like you've had a yeah. bang and then there's a pause and then the same fish will come back and whack it and you hook him. Yeah, some t yeah I've had that happen a few times when you've sort of been winding back on the boat and you, you'll feel a little pull that fish has hit it and then perhaps a couple of casts later you might catch that fish or sometimes what I will do is in with these bigger lures, like you mentioned before, they will sometimes grab the back of them if they're not really feeding too hard. So with them, or sometimes drop the size down to say that size. Yeah, yeah. And with that, it just it just makes it a little bit slightly smaller meal where they're probably going to get them trebles in it. Now getting back down to these uh, buzz baits, bass baits, spinner baits. Spinner what would you baits. call that? Spinner yeah. Baits, yeah. Well, I mean these are very effective lures, especially sort of towards the back end and. Uh, what I like most about these is when you've got a lot of weed uh, with these, because of the bar is pushing when they're running, pushing the weed away from it, and you've yes. only got singles. They don't often get snagged in the weed, so you can actually work these through the weed beds, and you can work them deeper than these other layers. Yeah, and um, they're very effective for catching pike in weedy waters. Now these originate, I think, uh, largemouth bass fishing in America. Yeah. Now, is that what we used to call, when I used to do the bass fishing over, it's called pocket fishing. They cast in holes yeah. in weed. Is the same principle apply to the uh, pike over here? Yeah, I mean, the same sort of principle applies. And um, it's one of them, don't get me wrong, you will still get a bit of weed on a now and again. But in general, you can work them through the weed beds and you won't get carrot up on the mare's tail. So the pike is sitting in the weed and you can bring this through them to where they are. And vibrant colours, you got two there? They'd, yeah, I mean, Do you have one... any colour, you know yourself a colour favourite on, on not just these baits but any lure? Well I mean don't ask me why because I mean that green is a very sort of unusual colour to go for but for whatever reason the pike seems to absolutely love it Yeah. and that green pattern there I mean with this one there I've had about three different 20 pounders on that they do seem to love that green colour even though it looks completely unnatural. Doesn't it just I mean I've got a, a, like a fluorescent green uh, barramundi plug from Australia it's only small uh, and it's probably only about, about the size of this one but I had a lot of fish on it. Yeah. Uh, but I do wonder that green, do you know what I mean? Maybe it's a good lure and I'm using it more, so obviously I'm going to catch more fish on it. But once you've had a couple of fish on any sort of lure, you have got faith in it to fish yeah. it. And the main thing is guys think they just go and spend the money in the tackle shop and they get sold a lure or whatever they get sold. But it's not until you start catching fish on a lure that yeah. I think you really start to, you know, find out we want fast, slow, twitching. You really learn what that lure likes. Exactly. I mean, I've got loads of lures at home and stuff like that but it's usually always a handful which come out most times sure. you know it's uh they're basically just tools really the right tool for the right job if you're fishing deep waters do you use the spoons much at all spinners and spoons yeah spoons there? have the place as well i mean they're very good for shallow water deep water brilliant for the rivers um because obviously you've got a nice big sort of flash on them you can be very very with your depth you can bring them up quick you can sort of jerk them and would you uh, fish with a sinker up the front of those at all or not really just fish Gen a spoon on his own? Generally not, no. I generally sort of fish a spoon on his own. But I mean, if you want to troll him, you can sort of weight him down yes. just to get him down a little bit deeper. But uh, they still catch plenty of pike now. Uh, another thing, uh, with all these hooks here, trebles and everything, they're all going to go in the net, they're all going to go in the fish, hopefully. Yeah. Getting them out's another problem. What, yeah. what do you use for that? Well, I mean, your knocking tool was definitely need, as in a good pair of uh, long nose pliers like that will get you into some tight reach spots and take out these big hooks but um, one thing which is always worth carrying especially if you're using these big big uh, big lures big trebles like that is sometimes they can get in a bit of a nasty place sure so the bolt croppers they don't come out much but when they do that will sort of save a fish that will so you're going through the hook shank what you're saying aren't yeah, you? you're yeah you're going to lose a piece of the hook to save the fish exactly and it's one of them where for the sakes of 50p for a new hook it's worth sort of uh, saving the uh, the pike's welfare and with this if there's any sort of problems, I can literally just crop the hook points off, remove the lure, and the pipe will be safe. That's good. That's a very good idea. And you know, just so people will show these are getting close up, they've got to be a foot long. They're certainly longer yeah. than the ones I'm <laughs> using, which is probably why I get cut marks on the back of my finger from their teeth. But I'm always more wary of a fish thrashing around on the mat, if you haven't got it pinned down properly, of the hook in your yeah. finger. And I mean, trust me, guys, you do not want one of these trebles going in there because, you know, these are only what I would call small... Quite relatively small barbs they're not a huge vicious yeah. barb on them do you ever close barbs on on those or you tend to, to leave a little bit there i will sometimes but to be honest with you i generally always fish barbs with my lures purely because the rods that i'm using the jupiter rods they're very stiff and with them being a lot of weight like this and a stiff rod if you crop them barbs out when the pike's fresh and the weight of that lure will often send them hooks out 
Later, when I go fishing with Mike, who's only really just sort of starting pike fishing, we had cart rods, which were 12 footers, which he didn't yeah. like, because when he strikes on the fish, they're always soft, all this. And I've got some of those wanderer rods, I think they call them, with a short sort of butt section and just a tip. So I quite like fishing with short rods, I've got to be honest. So I can see a pair of rods there, that if you leave them there, I'll probably put in my car. So tell me a bit about those, they look very nice. Well, this is sort of my me, uh, me heavy outfit here. I mean, this is just sort of a standard sort of jig bait rod, six foot six, and it's got a very stiff tip to it. And is, is that like a class or weight or casting weight? Um, or anything? This one's sort of rated up to about 120 grams, but to be honest with you, you can cast heavier on them. I mean, these are probably 135 grams, and I'm quite happy to cast them all day long than this. Yes, yeah. Um, and then, what is that, six foot long? Yeah, six foot six this is. And make and what, American, I imagine. Oh, it's it? just uh, a, Ber a Berkey one, this one. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I've got that other multiplying. As you can see there, you've got a trigger grip to aid if you cast it. Yeah. Um, a star drag on the other side there? Yeah, yeah star, star drag, drag on there. Or just a and what make is that? Can't see the one. That's an Abu, that is. That's an Abu. So yeah. you think you find you're happy with that type of multiplier reel? To be honest with you, I think the best sort of multipliers on the market are usually the Abus. Yeah, there are some very good ones as well, but I mean, I think for the jerk bait styles and there, definitely. Now you leave the, just show people, you, you, you've you got a level wind on there. Yeah. Now, when we go beach fishing, we dismantle this because we can cast farther yeah. with it. Have you ever tried that for, for lures, or, I, or, or, or you think I these are heavy to enough to cast? Yeah, but uh, I think it's one of them where you never, I mean that, if I wanted to, I could probably chuck that sort of 60 yards with this. Yeah. But as in, it's a different matter trying to work it at that, at that distance. That's um, true, yeah. And so I, know, I don't really have any problems with the casting, and also because you're winding back normally, that's going to lay it all nice and level, so it won't get any bunch in. And it's ready for the next cast. Ready for the next cast, exactly. and it's something else I haven't got to worry about after. Now Nathan, that looks like braid on there, is that? Yeah, like yeah. Braid. That's uh, that's eighty pound braid that is, which uh, I know might seem a little bit extreme, but uh, when you're sort of casting quite expensive lures like this, it uh, definitely helps get your money back. Because I mean. With this, if you get it snagged on the bottom, I've got a good chance of uh, straightening them trebles out. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. 80 pounds. That's it's unbelievable when you think it's like fresh water fishing, but <laughs> it's the diameter as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's the thing, it's got a very thin diameter compared to mono, yeah. um, so it's not inhibiting my casting or anything like that. Now, does that, what, does that work? Uh, the fact you've got a stiff rod to impart action to the lure. Yeah. I mean, there's no stretch in this like there is my mono. It's exactly. That's that's another advantage with the braid is and you're always, we're having no stretch, you're always in contact with the lure. You can feel it working, you can feel if it's if it's in weed beds, you can feel the takes as well. Plus, you move the rod top an yeah. inch and it moves an inch at the other end. Exactly, you know, with yeah. my soft, if I'm using mono at distance and a soft cart, what well, it's going to be pulling like this, I twitch and actually I'm not twitching anything. Exactly, you're I'm just not moving the, the lure. Slack. Well, with this, as soon as I... If I knock it an inch, it's going to pull back an inch on the other side as well. That's worth knowing. Yeah, good. Now, what about trace on the end? What sort of trace do you uh, uh, fish here with it? With, like your wire traces and stuff like that? Well, this one's quite sort of a longish one, and this is sort of generally what I use for a lot of my pull baits. Um, you know, such as these soft plastics and yeah. the plugs. And they've basically got a heavy duty clip on there. Yeah. And then this wire is about six, 60 pounds American fishing wire. It's quite a softish one. Yes. Uh, which is fine for these sort of lures. I mean, if you were to use sort of your jerk baits, you want something a lot more solid like that. Yeah. Purely because when you're tapping the lures, when you're giving them twitches, they can sometimes come back on themselves and the lure will catch over the trace. You yes. So yes. you use a much stiffer trace for that. But for these sort of baits, this now, is fine. This is different. There's a bit of valve rubber tubing on here. Yeah. Is that to stop you getting weed on there? or what? Well, what to be honest with you, the reason to put them on is uh, sometimes when I'm trolling my baits, I'll sometimes clip a lead on there and I'll yes. load on the, the side of the boat. And I've had times before when you come, you bring them back and they sort of swivel on themselves. Yes. So that just basically just helps tangle it. So that, that's a rigid ring, is it? Where yeah, so keep, yeah. So keep the swivel yeah, exactly. straight. Yeah, exactly. Just acts like a little boom. And really. that's a little cross lock swivel there, isn't it? That's what I call a, a sort of cross lock. It actually yeah. locks back into there. That's yeah, that's. Handy, yeah. It was uh, when you're casting these sort of big layers, it's very important you've got Don't want to lose them. Exactly. <laughs> heavy duty <laughs> terminal tackle. I don't know where you put it in there. Uh, now you've got a fixed ball outfit there yeah. that looks quite tasty. This is sort of my lighter rod here, um, and that's about an eight foot, 20 to 50 gram, and that'd be ideal for chucking these sort of spoons around. Stiff again then? Uh, 20 to 50 stiff. pound, that, to me that's... Yeah, or 20 to 50 gram. Yeah. Oh, gram, I think it's yeah. a pound, my God. <laughs> it's, uh, it's got more of a soft action to him, but it's quite good for just sort of twitching spoons back, or yeah. I'll even fish some of these small rubber layers on them sometimes as well. Um, and that's loaded up with braid again. Nice reel too, isn't it? Yeah, I like a front drag as well, because yes. uh, it's a lot sort of softer with your takes. Uh, when they're taking line off. How do you go on with these double handles? 
Um, Mike hates them. I'm not really in love with them, I must admit. I get caught sometimes, you know, catch, yeah. catch you on your sleeve and stuff. To, to be honest, with the lure fishing, I don't mind them really, because I think it just helps balance it a little bit. Yeah, I, I believe that's um, what they yeah. You know, and also as well, you're always sort of, you've got always got a handle there to reach for. But, um, but I've, I've, I've got no problems with single handle as well. Like. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's What's the, the braid on this is what? Yeah, yeah, that's loads of braid again. This time a little bit lighter. That's a thirty pound braid straight. Yeah. So it's very thin for casting, um, and then also as well you've got the extra strength. So I mean, a treble of that sort of size, which should easily pull straight and get a bit of snagged. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, should we all catch a fish on one of these? You need a decent sized net. Yeah. And that is over there. Well, this is the net I use for my lure fishing. Uh, as you can see, it's a big net because uh, I want to make sure if I deal with that fish in a lifetime, she's going in there. It's, uh, it's an extendable one, so it's quite compact for when uh, you're traveling light with your lures. Yeah. And also it's very handy for the boat. But what I like most about this is for lure fishing is it's got a very thick mesh to it. I noticed so, that, very wide, very wide yeah. mesh, yeah. And it serves a couple of advantages. One, it makes it more maneuverable in the water. Yeah. And then two... To scoop the fish out. To yeah. scoop the fish out, yeah. And, uh, and then also as well, it's a lot easier to get your treble hooks out just in case you know, yeah. you have it when the pike sort of gets to the it's annoying, it's annoying, and yeah. they twist and they roll. Yeah, they twist and roll. It can be annoying. And uh, with this, and it being a rubber mesh as well, the hooks, about 90% of the time, will never actually get stuck in it. So oh, really? That's good. Yeah. It, it makes knocking the pike a lot safer, it makes the fish a lot safer than that, and it also saves the mind from having a pike wrapped up with a load of trebles and mesh everywhere. Yeah, mate, it's a nightmare, it's a nightmare to get out here. Yeah, I've got, I've got a net through many holes in them where I've had to cut trebles yeah. out and stuff like that. But it can be a nightmare when the fish is tangled on rolls at the same time. That's where we get the problems if you've got yeah. young wranglers and then it's a nightmare, fish is thrashing, loose trebles flying around, you know, yeah, always, exactly. it always bothers me. So if kids are going to get a net, they might as well get a good landing net like that with a big wide mesh. That's a good idea. Yeah, I've got to say, to be honest with you, even, a lot of me, even though it is classed as a boat net, about 90% of the pike fishing I use this for now, yeah. just purely because, you know, you've got quite, it's got a lot of advantages to it. Yeah, and you can sort of travel good. light with it as well. Now, what sort of fish have you caught, Nathan? Give us a guide of what you've been catching, you know, over the years on, uh, what sort of sizes do you get? Well, uh, I mean, I sort of started out the same as a lot of people in the smaller waters using the smaller lures, uh, you know, catching plenty of sort of jacks and stuff like that. But when it started going on to the bigger lures, is when I started getting a lot of the bigger fish. And uh, So it made a difference, boosting, yeah. boosting the yeah. size of the lure. I mean, yeah. they will take the smaller lures as well, like, but as in, in generally, I think a big pike's looking for a big meal, and uh, that's what I like to offer them with the lures. As in, um, I've started doing a little bit on the trout reservoirs, and we've managed to get a lot of several big fish. So that's, I've had three twenties just on that one, just sort of trolling yeah, the big good. trout reservoirs. Like, so you troll those on a boat and you just hold the rod, or you put them in holders? I, I always hold the rod. I do because yeah. uh, I think that pike it doesn't take long to work out that's not a meal, and I like to sort of set the hooks home before he gets a chance to sort of spit it. Do you sharpen the hooks much yourself, or just do they yeah, stay yeah, sharp? Yeah. You actually, fire I, them? Uh, I'll always sharpen them and check them as well, and also as well, I'll uh, I'll always have a lot of replacement trebles with me because sometimes I'll have to crop them points because it's got some I don't know, stuck in the net or yeah. stuck in a pipe um, and then also as well if you hit a few snags very often it can actually point them hooks yeah, over. Yeah just double you only want one little bit of dull in, point and it's not exactly. going in the pipe. Yeah. And that's the thing with hooks of this size uh, you know they, they take a little bit of setting anyway so you want to make sure there is a, a razor sharp as you can so I always take lots of packs of replacement trebles with me as well and if uh, I'm not confident about it I'll change it. Yeah. Nathan, thank you very much. No problem. And hopefully we'll get the fish together sometime and he can catch something. No worries. Good man.